hello and welcome to beginner singers uh, firstly for those of you who wanted to join the live zoom my sincere apologies i'm working on a tv show right now and i have to do a recording session this evening so hopefully uh this will uh, cover everything that we were going to look at in the zoom session but i will also add a link for those of you who were signed up to be able to book a one-on-one -on -one consult with me, a, a quick chat, just to check in, see if you have any questions, any follow-ups, any of that kind of stuff too. So uh, I did really want to have that live element to it so that you could ask your questions and do some singing, get some feedback. Uh, but I'm gonna cover everything that I had down for the session right now and hopefully give you an introduction to beginning your singer journey. If you have been singing for a while too, this is gonna be a really great refresher, maybe show you some techniques and some, uh, some different approaches that maybe you've not used before. I just love as a professional singer myself, just branching out as much as possible and learning from as many different coaches as I can, trying to pick up different tips and tricks from all over the place. So I'm continuously learning. I'm always learning new things. So if you have been singing for a while, this is perfect. If you do take this to the next level from beginner singer, this be a good place to sort of come back to, check in and, and revisit as well. So this is kind of going to cover everything and hopefully be of huge value for you. So the first thing that I want to address, and this is one of the most common questions that I get is, can anyone sing? The kind of flip side to that question is, oh, well, I have a terrible voice. No one wants to hear me sing. That's the other thing that I always hear. Uh, so yes, I truly believe that anyone can sing. There's a very, very small percentage of the population that actually is tone deaf. And I think it's like 3%. It's a really, really small percent of the population. And that is just a very unique circumstance where someone will hear a note, try to repeat it the wrong thing comes out or they hear a note and what they hear of that note and they sing it might sound good in their ear but it's completely off from what everyone else is hearing now this is really really rare really rare there's a lot of times we hear something we try and sing it and the wrong stuff comes out that's just normal that is like i often compare singing to things like gymnastics or dancing because it's like watching a beautiful dance routine and then just saying, well, I wasn't born with it or naturally I can't do that. So obviously that's not the case. The people doing the beautiful dance routine have been working on this beautiful dance routine for a long time. And so if you want to be able to sing with beautifully, I use that in quotation marks completely. Um, but if you want to be able to start singing, you need to practice and it's muscles. Okay. So the voice is made up of many different muscles and you can train them, you can strengthen them and you can train them. So for example, things like your bridge or your break where you have pops and cracks and all of those things that, that come out when we're least expecting it and you completely choke or what have you, those are manageable. You can build the muscles, you can build the strength, you can smooth all of that stuff out. Um, there's so much involved to it that you can actually control. You can take away the fear and this is going to really boost your confidence as a singer and as a performer because when you understand how your voice is working, you can start to learn to strengthen it, control it. You'll understand where the weaknesses are, the pops, the cracks, the bridges, the breaks. Then you can start to manipulate things and you can control it. So that element of taking a deep breath, tightening everything up here, hoping for the best is completely pushed aside. That just will look very foolish and silly to you within the next 30 minutes. Um, and, and that eliminates that whole thing of fear of singing because now you know what's gonna come out. Now you know how to control what's gonna come out and, and you can enjoy it. And even if you know, okay, well, these are the few notes where things are a bit weak or things are a bit wobbly, or this is my bridge and I might pop or crack here. You will have the tools to strengthen and build your voice so that you can work towards eliminating that. Now, this is the same. Again, I always use analogies of fitness or dance or physical movement because that's exactly what we're doing. We're training muscles. Okay. We're working things here. So if you do have a bridge or a break, well, everyone has a bridge or a break. If you do have pops or cracks that are commonly occurring, have a look and break down the song. Is it always happening at the same point? 
and 99% is it will always be at the same point in the song where things pop and crack because that is where your bridge is so let's go right back to the start our voices I refer to two main sections there's more when you dig deeper but we're going to keep it simple today put your hand on your chest and go ah uh, you will feel a bit of buzzing there okay if you go up higher maybe with a hum kind of thing like a puppy dog and go you might feel a bit of buzzing here being sure that you're not okay we never want stress pinching pushing forcing anything from here okay so very gently if you put your fingers on your nose you might feel buzzing there then if you went back to that low note oh the buzzing will go from your nose so i refer to the voice in two main sections your chest voice your head voice because these are the two areas of resonance if you are doing things safely otherwise it's your throat <laughs> and you're pulling and you're pushing you're forcing it's painful we never want to live in that area that is not where we want to be working obviously things are working from there but we don't want to be forcing from here okay so let's kind of take away the thought that everything is controlled from here and relax all the stuff here because as beginner sing as the tendency is the minute you start singing take a breath shoulders shallow breathing shoulders come up muscles tense here our brain goes into panic mode our eyebrows are often up here trying to hit high notes and everything just gets tense the key to a really strong solid voice is that everything here has to be relaxed everything here has to be relaxed and the movement and the uh, flexibility all has to just be flowing okay sounds easy <laughs> the hardest part about what i teach is telling people to say tell your brain to just let your voice do what it can do because it's amazing what our voices can do but our brains get in the way all the time our brain is like push pinch reach force fight uh, uh. okay so the big thing is telling our brains chill out and just letting our voice do what we can do so today we're going to run through a few different exercises that are going to look at flexibility they might sound ugly okay we're not going to create beautiful perfect sounds in some of these exercises because i want you to learn and experience where the weaknesses are where the transitions are and where all the things are that you can turn around and then go okay this is where i need to strengthen this is where my bridge is this is where my brakes are this is where i'm not so strong with my breathing so all of these things once you know what's going on you can start to build on them and then again like i said build that confidence understanding how everything's working will lead you to a position where you can actually start to control it so from the very beginning i want you to start thinking about your breath because a lot of times, especially if you're a nervous singer, especially if you get anxious when you're singing, shoulders will rise, which in turn will, will sort of get these muscles here engaged, which will mess around with what's supposed to be happening here, which is just very relaxed, okay? So relaxing your shoulders, put one hand on your chest, one hand here on your stomach, under there is your diaphragm. So we've got our diaphragm that's controlling our in and our out breath. So when we breathe in, the diaphragm comes down, the lungs fill out, okay? So your stomach is going to move. We want to feel movement there and we want to feel a little bit of expansion here too, the lower rib cage. A lot of times when we breathe in, again, it's all here. So we want this to stay relaxed. I wanna start you getting used to you breathing lower down. So take a couple of nice deep breaths. So what we're gonna do, breathe in and breathe out. Just blowing it away, breathe in. And breathe out and breathe in watch your shoulders give them a little relax one more time and breathe out awesome that might feel very alien to some of you it might feel very different some people have a hard time with that some people who do maybe yoga or more into like physical fitness stuff that might be really easy um, but for some people it might feel oh this is really unnatural to me Big disclaimer, 
throughout this whole session, throughout your entire singing career, if you ever feel dizzy, lightheaded, nauseous, weird doing breathing exercises, stop immediately. The goal of any of this stuff, even if you're doing like serious vocal strength training or really um, big like lung capacity exercises, you never wanna feel rough, you never wanna feel bad, you never wanna feel pain. It should always feel comfortable, okay? Your brain's gonna be working, the work's gonna be going on here, the muscles are gonna be working to an extent sometimes. Sometimes you might feel a bit of work, okay? But never pain, stress, forcing, pushing, pinching, none of that stuff, okay? So if you ever feel any of that, so sometimes we'll get a tickle and a, and a, a cough will come immediately, or you'll be like, ah, I need water, I need water, back off. Okay, that is a sign that things might be rubbing, scratching, okay, it's really important. So the minute you get that kind of tickle or that scratch or whatever, just pause this video, take a breath, reset, have some water, speaking of which, hydrate, hydrate. Mm -hmm -hmm. So keep doing that as we go. But yeah, pause, take a break if anything doesn't feel so good, okay? So we looked at a bit of breath control now, what I want you to do is we're gonna start looking at our range. We're gonna move through things with a lip roll. Now, these can be really frustrating for people sometimes because it can be hard to kind of tap into it. But you're gonna just put your fingers at the jawline and just push up very gently. Not pushing in, some people squish like this and then you just cannot do it. So just pushing up very gently. You may have seen on YouTube people just doing all these things, not using their hands. I like to use my hands because it just takes this extra weight off it allows the voice to do what it needs to do without worrying too much about balancing the actual lip trill. So we're just gonna do some runs and I want you, instead of thinking up, down, I want you to think away and back. So we're just gonna go Again, keeping your shoulders relaxed, breathing nice and, nice and deep. Now, you might be sitting here going, getting really frustrated with it. If that's the case, keep trying to do the lip rolls, but as an alternative, you can do a, just a hum, okay? With any of the exercises that we choose lip rolls, just go with a hum. So the lip rolls are really good because they force everything to relax. So you'll be able to move through your range quite freely. You might find you can hit higher notes with the lip roll. So let's just take it for a little rip. This is a really gentle warm up for you. So what we're gonna do, uh, let me put my headphones on so I can hear what's going on. All right, so that's where the higher voices are gonna sit. This is where lower voices are gonna sit. And we're gonna go. that you might feel that your voice could have gone a lot further or uh, you might still be you might be struggling all different levels everyone's everyone's different okay but if that felt good I have tons of different exercises that you can follow along on the rock your voice podcast I'll put all the links in the email that I sent this to uh, to you with uh, so you can follow up and do lots more digging but today I just want to give you a few brief exercises a few brief things to think about to kick your voice into gear and start getting you singing so one big thing I mentioned how the brain gets in the way of the voice I want you to start thinking of your voice as an instrument really important it's you've got your resonances in your chest your head the the notes resonate and buzz differently in different spaces in your body so your body is your instrument everything is is coming out of here but everything's going to move through your instrument so really important thing is to start listening it's really cool to if you listen to kids if you listen to yourself if you were at a concert or a, a hockey game or something and you're cheering and you're like woo you're not gonna think okay 
okay that's a that's a high note if i was to suddenly sit here and go okay sing that note for me you'd be like this woman's crazy but if you were at a concert or if you're at a game you're like woo yeah 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 your your voice can do these incredible things so play around with your voice without thinking of like i have to hit this note i have to perform this a certain way i want you to start playing with your voice doing some sirens like woo 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 or yeah or hey 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 to hear the power hear the range and get used to what's going on what's already there that the minute we start thinking singing everything goes yoink and it's like hey woo yes harrison i know it's not the best noise so start thinking of your voice as an instrument that creates sound I want you to start thinking about creating sounds versus like, I am a singer, I'm suddenly making all these noises and putting all this pressure onto my voice. Okay, so, Harrison, come here. You're interrupting the flow. Okay, so thinking about your voice as an instrument, another thing to do is if you have kids, Harrison, come on. If you have kids, listen to the kids. Or like when you hear kids in a playground or you hear kids giggling and laughing, their screams and giggles and stuff are so high. They can hit notes. As a child, we can hit these incredible notes. And then the minute we're told to be quiet or um, another topic, if we're told we're not very good singers, oof, don't get me going on that yet. But um, listen to kids. Listen how free their voices are. We were all born with that. But we start to add these layers of like self-judgment, doubt, worry, fear. All this stuff starts coming onto here and starts locking this down. Of course, there's puberty. All these different things happen and our voices do change. But that freedom of the voice, the lockdown is purely psychological. There is so much more freedom to your voice that, that because even because you're here. Because you're now, your brain is in a mode of like, I'm now learning to sing. Jink. Okay, so if you're feeling that, go back to the breath work, just take a little relax, think of, don't take away all the judgment, start thinking about making noises. We are releasing your voices, we're gonna let things move. So thinking about kids, thinking about yourself at a hockey game or a concert or wherever you'd be like, woo, or if like you yell into someone across the street, hey, you see a great friend somewhere like across a field, like yay, whatever. Think about what your voice can do when you're not intentionally thinking, I'm going to hit this note and sing the word, yeah. Like, don't think like that at this point, okay? So, again, I've talked about voice health. You never want to push force or any of that kind of stuff. We've looked a little bit at breathing. Hold on, placement. Placement is key. So we're thinking about that head voice, the chest voice, all of that movement. I'm going to go through an exercise here. And I want to uncover... <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're going to uncover some of the bumpy bits. Mm -hmm. Like I said at the very beginning, knowing where the weaknesses are, we can strengthen them. Everybody has a bridge and a break. So if you, and a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I just have this area of my voice that's really weak and wobbly. Everyone has that because that is the transition point between head and chest, okay? So if you were to go, oh, hear that? Transition, little flip, little, little yodel essentially. That's what yodeling is, is that bounce between head and chest. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate now. I've been working on my yodeling. I love yodeling. Anyway, so that, that kind of push when you're like, I can sing certain songs to a certain point, but when the high notes come in, I either sound like I'm in the choir or everything feels like it's going to start bleeding and scratching and hurting. Okay, so that whole sort of, uh, 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 like those transitions. Everyone has that. It's, you're using different sets of muscles. So what we, get, what we do as singers is we work these muscles so that the chest can come up, the, uh, or the head can come down. And you get a, an area where you can start blending it. You might have heard of mixed voice. This is kind of a really nice blend where uh, there's no evident break. It's you're, you're kind of blending. So th this is all muscle work. Anyone can do it. It's all about training the muscles. It's not, was she born with it? And coming back to that, were, were you born with it thing? I think a lot of people grow up in houses where 
Um, maybe you're allowed to make more noise. Maybe things are more creative. Maybe your parents had music blaring all the time. Maybe you were encouraged to just make noise, have fun, explore, play a piano, bang some drums, whatever. Some families are definitely not like that. Some some places, people growing up may have been told, you know, be quiet, read a book, blah, 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 the, calm it down, calm it down. There's a time and a place. Music lessons is for that. Or like, you're not, I, I believe that the children that grow up in houses where they're in, invited to explore, the instrument, the noises, the sounds, hearing music like subliminally all day long, whatever. Uh, I think that is what we interpret as, oh, she was born with it. I think it's when you grow up in a situation where you, where it's all encouraged and it's around you, it's easier to step into it. Whereas it's like, oh, I shouldn't be loud. I, I you know, I, I, my parents weren't blaring Aretha Franklin or Stevie Wonder when I was a kid, so I, I really don't it's not just stored in the back of my memory so you know there's there's different upbringings so i believe that's a big factor in the whole born with it mentality some people literally just have killer instincts to just tap into it some people hold back so i believe the minute you let your brain just relax you stop holding back you can get into it so let's dig more into placement we're going to explore some of those wobbly bits again lower voices here and then higher voices here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna slide with a hum to an R. Ah, and I want you to think of your voice starting here, coming up and around. We're not gonna go mm, mm, ah, and pull from here. We're going mm, ah. Okay, it's very relaxed. The minute you feel any pushing or forcing, just back off, really relax it. And it might really kind of, for example, like, mm, hear that? Mm, there might be a bit of a crack or a break there and that is fine I kind of want that at this point because I want you to experience how your instrument works where these notes sit in your instrument it's not just weirdness it's not just fluke it's like this is where these notes sit this is where this movement will always be in your instrument it will vary a little if you start training it if you start working those muscles your chest voice will come up or your head voice might come down and then you can blend even more but it sits where it sits for now and if you trust it, get used to it, you'll be able to anticipate when these, when these pops and bridges and stuff come because you're like, this is just what my instrument does. This is how it goes. Um, and again, you can train it. You can smooth it out. You can get the sounds you want. But for now, we're observing, exploring, and feeling the sensations. Okay, so we're going to go. Mm -hmm. Again, kind of around and forward. Mm -hmm. you might start to feel mm, ah, might be a bit wobbly here mm, ah. if you can balance the air so that even though you transition from a chest to a head voice position you can let it be uh, nice and comfortable and sort of mm, ah, just let it move engage it mm, ah. don't resist it down here you'll be coming right into your break right here females you'll be right up in your head voice by now and the males will be right on a bridge here. Mm -hmm. might be what's happening there so just let it happen explore it learn your instrument one more so just knowing how everything feels and where to expect these changes then we can start to work on strengthening them. Sorry, my hair and my headphones and everything's doing strange things here. Okay, let me scroll through my notes here. So you've got, we're looking a bit at placement. Things have to move, you have to have that flexibility because then here's what we can do. So if you wanna start singing classic rock, for example, and you wanna be like, yeah, kind of up there, like big sound, you don't wanna be like, yeah, woo, you mean, yeah. You want to be nice and strong with your voice, but you don't want to be, yeah, you don't want to be pulling from here. And a lot of the male, um, male adult clients that I work with, we have to really kind of step back, flip into that kind of classical break, falsetto -y bridge, so that you can get that movement because so many kind of t train to get to a, just a ceiling. And that's it, that's as high as they can go. And then it's like, no, let's open this up. Let's go really light here over at the top. And then we can add strength. Then we can do some weight training and build some strength and stamina. Plus 
changing the tone if you're coming from like a to a yeah the tone is different placement of the note is the same you still want it to move up to your head you still want those high notes to move and be flexible not pull from here but by change just by changing kind of the vowel or the the tone of it making it more nasal than more round you're going from to yeah you can kind of change the stylistics of it okay there's so much honestly i could just throw information at you i want to give you all this information and also like i said please 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 if you were signed up for the the live class i'll, I'll make a calendly thing and please book a book a quick consult with me because i'd love to hear your questions and everything so the other things that we can train is our low end and our top end so there are different exercises that kind of bring the larynx down a little and they're kind of dopey exercises so i like to do things like this we go, we go la, 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 and again that just sounds silly and ridiculous but it's the equivalent of squats for your voice okay so that can bring your chest voice up and that can you can start strengthening that bridge area so you can start to blend it out um high-end strengthener too you can work on things like woo we we looked at those kind of sirens and thinking about being at, at a concert um and doing all of those kind of exercises to just open up the top end now stylistically we can change things up so that you can go into kind of that nasal what's called pharyngeal resonance which is very classic rock so this is a fun one let's try this because it's very common that people want to sing like say Carrie Underwood, Kelly Clarkson or like Axl Rose, ACDC, any, any of those kind of sounds. So it might be classic rock, might be country pop, uh, Demi Lovato, all of that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is like an NG, like the word sing. You're going to go hmm, 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 like a puppy dog, but you're going to bring it down. It might kind of snap into your chest a little bit. You go hmm, and when I say snap, I don't mean it's going to hurt, snap, but you might feel the sound kind of click down. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Now let's try going up. It's really important that it's the NG. You're not ha ha. It's closed. The sound is all here. Hmm, hmm. Or you can just do it with your mouth closed too, if that helps. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But what I like to do is with the NG, and you can slide up. You go hmm, hmm, hmm. And this just kicks the sound to here, stops it from. Hmm, it stops that pull here okay so what you can do then is like mm -hmm, ah, and just drop your tongue and let the sound out it's a super fun exercise i love it I'm not adding extra power or volume at the top literally just dropping my tongue you kind of let it build drop your tongue and then it comes out so mm -hmm, ah, mm -hmm, ah, and that's where you'd go for like the carry underwards and that kind of sound okay so i want to kind of get myself back on track here and talk a little more about your voice as an instrument it's something you can train you can definitely work at it you don't want your brain getting in the way of what your voice can do so at this point if i wish we were live at this point i would open it up and be like okay what questions does everyone have where are we at what are you working on really common to be just like i'm working on this song i'm having a really hard time hitting the high notes what I recommend, if you want a way to kind of practice and work through some songs that you find challenging, go to your lip rolls, because that's going to open everything up and let your instrument go through the notes in a very relaxed way. So even if you're very much flipping into a falsetto-y kind of heady sound when you're working on high notes. So let's say, you know what, let's go simple. We're going to happy birthday. So let's all go through. We're going to... So there, you might already feel a little jump on the to you, okay? So people be like, I'm scared to just even sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. That might be what happens sometimes, but that's just a matter of the muscles on that top end are just not strong enough to hold the note in place, balance the air. So working on some exercises and I'm going to give you lots of links and things for all these exercises to strengthen that. So happy birthday to you. So instead of thinking happy birthday to we're happy birthday to up and over. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And I use my hand because that's kind of how where I'm feeling all of the notes of where they sit. 
kind of digressed and jumped the gun there. But I want to go back to the lip rolls and I want you to see if you can feel the resonance and the placement shifting. So, okay, did you feel movement? Ideally, you felt movement, but not pressure or tension in your throat. So keep practicing that with a lip roll. If you can't do the lip rolls, go with a hum. But what I would do is go from the lip roll to the hum. Now this doesn't have to apply to happy birthday. This can apply a song that you're working on that you find really challenging. Go through the whole song, go through the lip rolls, same process, feel the movement, feel all of that shift. Then go to it with a hum. Again, so this is kind of the next step. This has less of that relaxed flexibility than the lip rolls. So you may feel a little bit more challenging throughout the range. So then I would go to a B and I go B, 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 B. And if it flips, that's fine. So you hear that? That pressure backs off, the power backs off. B, B. And the pitch can go wobbly too, right on the bridge too, just like it did there. But Obviously, with strength, when you're B, 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 you can work it, train it, strengthen it. I'm just going to really exaggerate all of my bridges and breaks just so that you can hear that that's naturally how my voice is. But you train the muscles, you can you can blend everything. So B, 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 B. Okay, so that would be if if I was just completely relaxing the muscles, not using any control, anything that I've worked or anything. Obviously, B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B back to here. B B B B B. So there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of wobbles. If there might be a lot of wobbles. You can train those muscles. You can eliminate that wobbling. So when you're working on a song that you find challenging, be it Happy Birthday, be it a Kelly Clarkson, Demi Lovato, Freddie Mercury, what have you, I always like to start with the lip rolls. Then I'll go with the NG shape or a hum. Then I'll go to the B. And then just because that way you're working through the entire range of the song in a very gentle way. You're not putting too much pressure on it. You're just letting your voice get familiar with the patterns. Also paying attention to what your breath is doing with the patterns. And then you can start. So the lip rolls to the B, there's quite a lot more weight is coming onto the mechanism. Okay. Then you can start using your words. Now words <laughs> so we've got placement with our range we're moving around a lot with our range the muscles are doing different things the higher lower higher lower muscles are doing different things throw in some vowels and things start changing even more so we're going to run through another exercise here lower note lower voices here uh higher voices here and we're going to go through some vowel shapes we're going to go a e o and for me, right here on my range, I'm feeling this in my chest. So if it helps, put your hand on your chest. A -E -O -O. And start to take note. A -E -O -O. What happens with the resonance as you get higher? A -E -O -O. Again, I'm going to really exaggerate things so you can hear. A -E -O -O. Also, take note of which vowels feel more comfortable. Some people love singing oohs, some people love ease, some people find certain ones more harder than others. This is why vo vowel modification is really common and it's what people use to really hit notes with the best quality, the best tone, the best way possible um, when they're recording or singing live. For example, the Justin Timberlake, it's gonna be May joke, uh, is because the A is easier to sing than the E. The E is more pinched and tighter. So he sings it's gonna be May instead of it's gonna be me, because that just is not a great sound. So let's keep going. We've got A, E, O, O. And we're gonna really transform our thought process of instead of going up, 
I want you to go open and give your voice space. A lot of times, hey, ah, hitting that ceiling again. We're going to get rid of that ceiling. Take that triangle and go forward and open with it. Okay. Hey, oh, relax your tongue, open your jaw. Hey, oh, okay, let's go. And here. Hey, through a bridge for the female voice here so you might feel things wobbling might be a bit weak it doesn't matter we are beginners okay i just had a thought that i oh so anchors anchors are important so let's just try this as a as a little experiment our brain is always getting in our way as singers so here you might be thinking ah, always just thinking about that ah, ah hitting that top note try it again think about giving the first note the low note the best chance the best foundation dig in and go A -E -O -O. see how that changes things A -E -O -O. think about the first note more than the top A -E -O -O. one more A -E -O -O. so when you're singing your songs I want you to think about a few things. Placement, breath. You're going to think about anchors. If there's a note in a song where you can like, boom, I'm going to lock in and then just send the note forward from here. Pick those anchors and those kind of check stops throughout the song where you can be like, yep, reset, anchor, lock in, get my foundation and then here we go. Because if we're always thinking, here comes the high note, here comes the high note, that's when things start locking up down here and it's like, oh, here's the high note, I'm going to choke. And then you choke because you're just, firstly, you're anticipating and manifesting it. Secondly, oh my gosh, my hair, what the heck. Um, there's just, just don't get, my hair's just gone crazy. Just don't get in your own way. Try not to get in your own way. Try to get out of your way. Try to explore and be forgiving, be kind. Here's a quick analogy before I, I, I'm going to tap out here because uh, I'm giving you a lot to think about, especially if you are a complete beginner. But what I'm also going to do is, um, I'm, like I said, in the email, there's going to be a ton of links to things for you to take this next, uh, take it to the next level if you want to dig in, learn more uh, and get you some exercises and things to practice if you want to dig in, if this made sense. Um, quick analogy though I had a I had a very sweet little I think he was five uh five-year-old boy put in front of me just a couple of weeks ago bless him he sang twinkle twinkle really cute obviously as any five-year-old would be singing twinkle twinkle little star yes I love it and then his mum was like well does he have any potential <laughs> I I honestly I wanted to cry for this kid because I was like okay so so my first question to her was well how how is his gymnastics is, he, is his back how are his back flips looking and she looked at me like I was crazy and I said well if if he if he can't do back flips yet clearly he hasn't had much gymnastics training so you you got to think of it from that context of like well if he hasn't had any training how do you expect to just look at his potential when he's he's five and this is this little pure un, untrained voice like okay so please no matter what age you are if you are 45 55 75 you if you haven't trained your voice don't judge where you're at okay and if you have trained your voice and you've had troubles or you've ha you have been training your voice and you're not getting the results you want please 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 take me up on this like little free chit chat and let's figure out what's going on um because i truly believe that anyone can train their voice to sound exactly how you want it to in a very healthy safe um results based very fast way it's just a matter of understanding what your voice is doing, how to do it and how to strengthen it safely. Um, so no matter what age you are, don't judge your voice if you haven't had the opportunity to train it um, the right way. And sometimes people who are in choirs, you want to ask, what, what's my range? Uh, and, and it'll be like, am, am I soprano? Am I also, what am I? I'm, I'm kind of an anomaly as, as a coach in a sense that I'm just like, please don't put yourself in a box. That's like looking at a guitar and saying, no, that's just, that's a country guitar or that's a Mozart piano. It's like, no, 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 this is an instrument that can do so many things. And um, 
and and I'm you know not against classical training but I work with a lot of people who have been heavily classically trained and they come to me with their instrument and it's very clear that they've essentially been going to the gym and just working their one arm and and this arm is over here like this and it's like yes and this one is like I, I, I can't lift anything and so it's like Whoa! and then there's like I really want to sing a pop song and it's like I'm singing a pop song because that's that's all their instrument is aware of what to do um so and that's not me bashing like incredibly trained voices in that genre that style but like that's also one of my specialties and passions is working with people who have been like classically trained to be like let's free it up let's bring some crazy to the to the table and like let's get your sound out as opposed to this perfect sound so so many different things that I could just go off on and talk about. Um, but yes, and one more thing, and I, this is the one for me that gets me crazy because this is so, so common. I should have touched on it right at the start. But if you were like, I wanna say, yeah, 50% of my adult clients that was told something by someone of zero importance, or maybe, okay, you value the input from your uncle, your your mum, your whoever. Um, but someone who maybe told you that you're not a good singer, or you sound bad, or you're out of tune. A really common one that shocks me is kids that were told, oh, can you just lip sync in the, in the school play or the school show or what have you? Because your voice isn't very good. We're just going to get you to lip sync. Who says that to a kid? Anyway, a lot of my adult students, I have students who are 40, 50, 60, who haven't sang for their whole bloody lives because some idiot at some point told them when they were a child that they cannot sing. So if you are one of these people, God bless you for showing up today and thank you for taking the risk and, and bringing your confidence and um, screw that person who said that because they clearly didn't know that the voice is made of muscles and you can train them and you can sing exactly how you want to. So now is the time, take the next steps if you want to. I'll put some links of things you can do for free or if you wanna start digging in even further, there's more, more things and programs. I've got so much stuff going on um, for absolutely everyone, no matter where you're at, what you're doing, how, what you wanna do. Uh, hit me up on the Calendly link, let's book a time to chat. And yay, thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for your understanding. I'm so sorry that I had to move the schedule around. Uh, but I really hope that this has been of value to you and that hopefully if you were one of the people that was told you you have a bad voice or that you can't sing, uh, that you understand now that you truly, truly can because it's something that you can learn, you can train, you can safely build and, and with that and the understanding of your instrument, your confidence will come too. So well done. Thanks for being with me. I hope this was helpful and please keep in touch. Emma at rocketvocalstudios.com, R-O-C-K, R-O-C-K-I-T, vocalstudios.com or Rocket Vocal Studios on social media. You found me, uh, so keep in touch and uh, let's take your voice to the next level. Have a great day.